Good evening, everyone. It is Tuesday, July the 2nd, 2019. It is currently 6.28 p.m. Central Time. Well, this is a live broadcast for the VBC 66 app. I apologize repeating some of these things at the beginning. I know I repeat the same thing over and over and over again, but as I've explained, when I go live, I have to give people a few minutes to tune in. There's no, there's, I guess I, I could schedule the live broadcast better, but the, my live broadcasts are always impromptu. So, so I apologize for saying this. And the reason I, for the, for the live audience, I don't even hear all of this because they don't show up usually before five, six to 10 minutes after I've started. But for the people who hear the recording of this, they're like, I get it. Okay, I know, I apologize. But let me just say this right from the start. This is for the VBC 66 app. For those listening to the recording of this or if you tune into the live broadcast, you don't know what the VBC 66 app is, well, that's the official app of Victory Baptist Church. Go to the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. Do a search for VBC, which stands for Victory Baptist Church. VBC and the number 66 all together, no space. VBC 66, get our app. You can listen to our live broadcast through the app. You have access to everything that we post. I'm not going to go into a lengthy discussion about everything on the VBC 66 app, but there is a lot there to look at, to listen to. I think even if you hate me, there's enough content on the app to, to give you spiritual food in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, late at night. Every day, I'm always posting something. So please take some time to do that, all right? And I have to, yes, I'll turn off my notifications because I'm getting notifications. All right, so uh, before we get to tonight's brief devotional thought, I do have to say something. Earlier today, I did a live broadcast. Wasn't super happy with that live broadcast. Um, the goal of that live broadcast was just to remind everyone that this week on the VBC 66 app, the focus is manna. We are focusing on the idea of manna. And I'm challenging people to take a piece of paper, divide it into two halves. On the top side of one half of the page, write the word manna. Then look up five different resources like Bible dictionaries, encyclopedias, study Bibles, whatever, and write down uh, and place them like as bullet points, number one, number two, number three, number four, everything you can learn about manna, right? Summarize it. Number one, okay, what does the word manna mean? Number two, what is manna? Number three, and just, uh, just start labeling them as many as you can. Look up five different sources. Also, I want everyone to go to Exodus chapter 16 and start reading it. I'm not going to repeat everything I said today, but I, I, I simply wanted to do a live recording to get everyone to, to continue to work on, on, on not only Exodus 16, but the word manna, and because that's the focus on the VBC 66 app. I've already, I think I've posted one sermon in relation to Exodus chapter 16 in the Sermon and Bible Study Notes section. I'll probably be posting another one for the evening sermon uh, tonight. So I wanted to do that. However, the recording didn't really go as well as I had wanted. Um, I was trying to hurry because I had to leave. Uh, also, behind my house, they were doing some kind of, I don't know what they were doing back there, some kind of construction. And so the, the, it was just noise everywhere, and it was chaos. And so the, the recording, I didn't post the recording on the VBC 66 app, but the recording of this morning's live broadcast the live disaster, I like to call it, um, it is available on Spreaker. I did not delete it. I just left it there because, you know, it, there's something about imperfection, I think, right? I mean, it's human, right? It's human, maybe. Okay, I don't know. All right, but why am I here tonight talking? Why? Why did I go live tonight? Well, I was sitting here reading a book. I know, a shocker. I'm always reading a book. And... There was something mentioned in the book that just really hit me. And it's something that has bothered me my whole Christian life. And, and let me ask this question this way. What should be the normal daily Christian experience? What should the normal daily Christian life look like? I have pondered this question I think literally since the, 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 the first week or two of my salvation, I, I, ha, I have really 
I, I've really tried to figure this out. And, 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 and to be honest with you, I, I don't really know. I don't know if I have an answer and it's bothered me greatly, but Okay, uh, Twy well, Twyla uh, just told me that she didn't hear any of the distractions uh, from uh, the live broadcast this morning. Well, thank you for listening to the live broadcast this morning. Um, and good. That, so maybe I will post the, the recording. All right, but back, back to this subject. Now, 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 okay, I'm getting, I'm getting distracted. All right, but here's the, here's the thing. I, I, I've been struggling this with my whole Christian life. And the idea is what, what should the normal daily Christian life look like? What should the normal daily Christian life look like? Now, when I was a brand new Christian, I thought, okay, every day I should do the following, right? There were certain things I thought as a Christian I should do. I should, you know, I should read my Bible. I should study my Bible. I should pray. Um, I should try to look for any opportunity I have to share the gospel. Obviously, I should be at church every chance I can get for teaching, okay? If there's a discipleship course, take it. If there's a witnessing course, go to it. If there's special meetings during the week, go. Go whenever I could, all right? No matter what I had to do, be there, right? It, with, without sleep, no matter what I had to do, go, all right? So these were just basic ideas that I, 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 I came up with. But it did not take long being around other Christians that you kind of caught on, well, wait a minute, they don't quite perceive the, the daily Christian experience the same way. There was almost this attitude, okay, well, if you're a pastor, you do those things. But the average Christian, they just kind of go to church and supposedly believe in Jesus, and that's kind of it, right? I mean, they try to be good moral people. Uh, they pray when, you know, maybe before their meal, Um you know, but, you know, they may read their Bible some, but they're not necessarily committed to a, you know, read the Bible every year all the way through. In fact, I met, I've met thousands and thousands and thousands of Christians. Those Christians do not read the Bible on a daily basis. All right. So that's something they don't do daily. Bible study, actual Bible study, that doesn't happen. Okay, so so I, what is it supposed to look like? Like as a pastor, like what should you, what should your expectation be? Right, just be moral. Like, are, are we just worried about moralism, or are we worried about Christianity? And so I've always struggled with these questions. And the reason I wanted to record is just to read something that I read a little while ago. All right, here's the introduction to this book. It's called the Believer's Code. Many believers who are serious about personal devotions. Stop right there. All right, so now you already kind of have a category. He's going to refer, the author here is going to refer to believers who are serious about personal devotions and, and he adds spiritual growth. So do you have some Christians not serious about personal devotions and spiritual growth? Is it a requirement to be serious about personal devotions and spiritual growth? Or is it simply a suggestion? Like, is there different categories? Like, okay, those are the serious Christians. Those are the nominal Christians. Those are the we don't care Christians. Now, now each group all perceive themselves to be Christians. But, but what should be the, the expectation? So many believers who are serious about personal devotions and spiritual growth seem to think it is the volume of scripture one can devour daily that is most important. For years, I've sought to read the Bible through every year, which involves the reading of several chapters a day. Now, here's someone who, for years, read the, reads the entire Bible every year. Okay, That's, there's some Christians who do that, but it's not the norm. If it was the norm, trust me, if it was the norm, it wouldn't. It, you would think it wouldn't be so hard to get Christians to talk about the Bible because, well, if they're reading it every day, year after year after year, talking about the Bible would be pretty much the norm. But that's clearly not the case. But continue here, right? However, the, the Believer's Co., speaking of this book he's writing, is designed to guide readers through each day of the year with one particular verse upon which they can meditate, both day and night. 
Now he makes a reference to Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. And we all know this verse. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Now is that the, is that the expectation for the Christian? Should the Christian meditate on God's word day and night? Is that the expectation? I, I, I don't know. I want to say it's the expectation, but clearly it doesn't happen. Clearly, I don't think that that's the, the normal Christian life. So what is it? When I was a young Christian, I, I was taught that a Christian memorizes scripture. So very early on in my Christian life, I got a little, it was a little green pack, right? It could fit in your pocket. And in the pack, there was, there was all these little cards with scripture on it. You picked up one. You, 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 this was the scripture you would memorize that week. And then you would put it on the other side of the pack. And those were the ones you had memorized, right? So the next week, you would find a new scripture to memorize. You would pull up the one on the other side of the pack to review. So you would memorize one each week while reviewing the previous week. Go on to the next week. And then by the end, I can't remember, like you were supposed to have 52 scriptures memorized, uh, you know, I think by the end of the year, something along those lines. I can't remember exactly how it worked. But that was, so, that, according to what I was taught, that's the, that's the normal daily Christian experience. Reading scripture, studying scripture, memorizing scripture. But what I, I was told that, and then when you, when I got around all the Christians and all the so-called Christian activities, they didn't really talk scripture. They didn't really care to talk about scripture. Many couldn't really engage in a meaningful conversation about scripture. Their ignorance of scripture usually was very apparent. And so you're like, wait a minute, who, who's supposed to be doing this? Who, like, who are these people? Well, here he's like, hey, I, I'm writing this book to try to get everyone to meditate day and night on one scripture a week. Now, I've been trying that on the app, on the VBC 66 app. A couple of weeks ago, one entire week dedicated to a verse in John chapter 10. The next week, an entire week dedicated to a verse in John chapter 17. Last week, an entire week dedicated to a verse in Ephesians chapter 3. This week, an entire week dedicated to the word manna in Exodus chapter 16. I'm trying the same concept. And you still find sometimes, can you get really people to engage in it? I learned this way back in my sermon audio days. Back when I was on sermon audio, if I recorded a news and focus program about a current event, boom, 20,000 downloads, 25,000 downloads, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of emails, crazy, crazy conversations, engagement. But when I try to do the daily manna program, <laughs> there was a drastic difference because I wanted to give people daily manna scripture. There, there, there wasn't the same enthusiasm. So what should be the daily experience of a Christian? Let me, let me go back and finish reading what he starts here. So he's designed this book to give readers uh, to, to give readers uh, through each day of the year with one particular verse on which they can meditate both day and night, Joshua 1.8. You will find a verse for each day accompanied by a devotional thought and a code word and a sentence prayer. All right. When teaching us how to pray, Jesus instructed that we should ask God to give us this our daily bread. Note, it is daily bread, just as the manna, ah, that fits with the theme this week, just as the manna fell each day for the children of Israel in the wilderness, we need a daily portion of God's word to sustain us. Now, do Christians really believe we need God's word daily to sustain us? Because I know Christians who do not daily engage in any meaningful involvement with scripture on a daily basis so what does that mean about them being sustained? Is that just something we say or do we really mean that? I think a lot of things Christians say is just utter, complete, garbage, nonsense, cliches that are meaningless, useful, use, useless, worthless, and just should just be thrown in the garbage because we don't mean it. We just say it. We need God's word every day to sustain us. I haven't picked up a Bible in six months, but I need it every day to sustain me. Okay, really? No. 
that's do do we need it? And, and and what happens if we don't do it on a daily basis? But it sounds great. He goes, now this is very I like this. 